an avid uh, computer gamer, also an avid computing student, um, hoping to go to Imperial to, uh, to study computer science. So he's, you know, he's a pretty good student. But he decided that uh, an extended project qualification around the computing area was something that he really wanted to do. So he decided to build his own computer. He decided to build his own gaming computer, which is what he did. So he set himself a budget, which was uh, to be under £1,000. And uh, what he was able to do was to go out and research, uh, because obviously the structure of the extended project is encouraging you to go, encouraging students to go out and to research something that they are passionate about. And Bradley was passionate about computer gaming. But he felt that he could do better than anything he could buy on the market. So he went out, he talked to, uh, he managed to find a very um, uh, knowledgeable uh, computer shop that he went to speak to, and he discovered that actually all of the people in there had already built their own computer. So what he needed to do was to craft the idea of building his own computer into something that would be acceptable as an extended project, because you can't just go out and do anything. You've got to have a bit of a sort of an academic bent behind it. So um, what we decided was that he would actually go out and see if you could do this as a normal sort of sixth form student, but also to consider what skills you needed to be able to build your own computer and whether it was something that just anybody could do. So that was what he set out to do. Uh, and the result was that he built his own computer. He worked his way through the maze of all the different components. He went out and bought the components. And over the summer holidays, he put the components together. And luckily, he took a few slides as he went through so that we had a nice record of what he was doing. And then <clears throat> he was able to bring in his computer as the artifact that he had made for his extended project, because as the extended project, you can either do a 5,000 word report, or you can make an artifact, which could be a painting or a CD or whatever you like, but in this case was a computer, um, and do a shorter report. So you have to do still some sort of academic report that goes with it, that was the piece that was looking at the skills that he needed to weave his way through to building his own computer. So you then, of course, have to present what you have built to a knowledgeable audience. So we did a bit of a dry run with my year 10 GCSE students who were hanging on his every word. So that was really quite a good dry run. Before he did the official one, which is the year 12s and the staff, where he got some quite good, um, quite good questions. So what he was able to show was that the hardest thing was actually understanding all the jargon, understanding what was important in building a computer. So there was a certain amount of being able to um, understand all the, the different components that you needed and understand what, what you needed to spend your money on. And obviously, if you're building a gaming computer, the most important thing to spend your money on is the graphics card. So he bought the best graphics card he could get, and there were a couple of compromises in, in some other areas. Um, what uh, he was able to do was to bring his computer in. It looked very nice, I must say. He chose a very nice um, um, black case with a few little bits of blue light on it, which went down very well with the year 10s. Uh, and he was able to run a benchmark on it, which was a, obviously a sort of a gaming benchmark, which again went down quite well with the year 10s. And then the year 10s were able to ask him, you know, why did you do this and what did you get out of it? And he was able to say, well, I got myself for a lesser amount of money a much more powerful gaming computer that does exactly what I want. Um, these were some of the compromises that I made. If I were to do it again, I would do this. And actually, it's not that hard. And having built one, his conclusion was that he would never again go and buy a pre-built computer because he knew exactly what was in his computer. And if he wanted to upgrade it, he could do that. And it was designed for exactly what he wanted. Now, this was a really good project. It was an A-grade project, and I was lucky enough to be his supervisor as well as his computing teacher. But the really interesting thing was that when he went for his interview at Imperial, which was supposed to be 40 minutes, he spent approximately 45 minutes talking about his extended project building his own computer, so they quickly rushed in a few academic questions in the extra five minutes, which, of course, et in to the next candidate's time. And the net result was he got an offer from Imperial. So I think what I would say to you is that if you have students who are interested 
in a particular aspect of computing. The thing that you must remember is that with an extended project, it must not overlap at all with the syllabus that is being taught for computing. But as we all know, we don't do build your own computer in A-level computing, so that really isn't an issue. So there are areas around the syllabus that we all follow that students can pick up something that is exciting. And I have to say that it, it did no harm to my year 10 GCSE group to see that an A-level student had actually built his own computer, not only that, but brought it in and showed them which went down extremely well. So it served quite a lot of purposes in the school, producing a really nice project, which got Bradley a very nice uh, um, university offer, but also, I think, encouraged some of the students lower down the school to say, actually, I think I could do this, and perhaps encouraging them to continue with computing. Thank you.